Mula Winaka and welcome to For The Record. Over the course of many months, we've spoken various times about climate change and what it means for the Pacific uh, and what it means for Fiji. We've also spoken about the impacts and consequences of climate change if nothing is done. Now, one of the areas that Fiji is pushing in is the, the preservation of forests. This is being done because forests, as we know, are uh, seen as a tool to reduce the level of carbon in our atmosphere, in our environment, and make the world a healthier place to live. Tonight, we'll be talking about the uh, program called Red Plus. That basically means reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. There is a multi-sectoral group in Fiji that is working towards the preservation of forests, conserving forests, and basically ensuring that we are able to account for the carbon emissions that, that Fiji is responsible for. Our guests tonight, let me introduce them to you very quickly. Uh, Mr. Eliki Senivasa, the Acting Conservator of Forests. We also have with us, this, uh, with us the Manager of Development from the Ministry of Itoke Affairs, Ms. Elizabeth Tamanisau, and from the NGO Mangireviti Nature, Mangireti Viti Nature Fiji, we have Director Nunia Thomas Moko. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being uh, on the show tonight. Uh, we're, we're going to have a very interesting time talking about conservation, preservation of forests uh, and the Red Plus program. But let's first of all introduce Red Plus to Fiji because while there is a lot of work going on behind the scenes, uh, there are efforts to, to, to preserve our forests. A lot of people would be asking what really is Red Plus and, and where it comes from. To my understanding, it, it's the, it was established in Fiji in 2009, and over the uh, f last few years, there have been efforts on a community level, uh, on a, on a, on a uh, uh, multi-sectoral level, and on a government policy level to, to come up with measures and initiatives that protect and preserve our forests. I'd like to begin with you, Elisa Pedi, uh, from the Ministry of Ito KFS, because 90% uh, of, of Fiji's uh, land is owned by uh, uh, the Itoke, by indigenous landowners. And that really, I understand, it is, is where the focus is, because that is where the large bulk of our forests are. W what, what exactly uh, is going on in terms of uh, the Itoke Affairs Ministry in the Red Plus program? Okay. Um, with uh, the ministry, it uh, sits on the National um, Steering Committee uh, for Red Plus together with uh, uh, it's, uh, one of its Itoke institutions, which is uh, uh, the Itoke Land Trust Board. Uh, they're very much into this because, yes, as you say, the, the lease, uh, or well, the land where the forests grow, uh, if it's on native land, definitely will be affecting the, uh, uh, the community, and uh, which is land, as you know, uh, Itoke land, which is administered by the um, uh, the TLTB. Um, Red Plus being a new program for, for Fiji, uh, it's, it's taking quite some time to actually plan it out because, you know, for, for the type of lease that it will get. We already, but we are learning from the, uh, con the Soviet conservation lease, um, you know, this is but uh, that is one conservation list, but uh, red plus on this list, it'll be solely red plus taken on, a, uh, be offered as a red plus uh, list. So that is from the TLTB side. Um, talking about uh, communities, it's, uh, they are aware of this, especially the uh, the specified uh, communities uh, from the ministry, and we have uh, uh, established the um, National Itoke Resource Owners Committee, uh, which includes a representative, a resource owner representative of all the 14 provinces in Fiji. Uh, it, uh, it's also membered by the provisional. Um, Commissioners or the Rokotui, um, Red Plus is very much one of their function um, because of its conservation, uh, uh, the ties to conservation uh, and conservation of forests. Well, uh, let's let's move on to um, uh, Eliki, uh, conserving forests. Your your role basically is. Uh, acting conservative for us, so it falls on your shoulders, doesn't it? What, what is the scale of work that we are looking at 
how big is the task ahead of us in conserving forests? Thank you, Edwin. Um, this has been the task of the department for a long time now. Eh? We've been conserving a lot of forests since the colonial period. So um, we are the, 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 the government think that we need to expand. You know, we expand the, the areas because the need is quite prominent now. Forest is very important. If you look at the UNF triple C discussion, forest is one of the issues that is discussed at the top level. It shows that with good forest, you have good water system, you have good agriculture system, you have good uh, um, um, biodiversity system to enhance the livelihood of our people. So uh, the role of uh, the, the government and forest in particular is to, to facilitate the expansion of uh, some of these key uh, forest areas. For our basic needs, we need clean water. We need continuous uh, like uh, insects to live because they uh, bring in uh, pollin they pollinate most of our foods. So uh, they are very important in in the whole uh, livelihood of Fiji. And this is where government is is uh, with support from other agency, uh, government agency as well as uh, non governmental organisation and regional and development partners. We hope to strengthen and expand our conservation uh, for for this particular need. Eh? It's, it's important that we keep our forests for our own need. Mm. Um, we'll come back to uh, uh, what amount of forests need conservation, but um, Nunia, if you just turn to uh, Mangaliti Viti, Nature Fiji, um, of course your, your core role is, is uh, the preservation of flora and fauna. Um, when, when you look at uh, the, the situation that exists in Fiji in terms of carbon emissions and the, uh, the, the forests that we have, are we on par in, in terms of uh, balancing out our, our carbon emissions and having uh, uh, lush forests? Thank you, Edwin. Um, I think the, the question of carbon emissions, the Department of Forests would be a better place to, to answer that question. Um, our role in this whole process uh, as, a, as a local organization is we are primarily forest-based. And the reason that we are forest-based is because 99% of plants and animals that are found only in Fiji are found in our forests. And, um, and we support any initiative that goes towards helping these plants and animals continue to survive because of the key roles that they play. Bats, for example, they play an important role in ensuring that native plant seeds are spread out, uh, that the pollination occurs and that fertilization occurs. Without bats and birds, the native birds, we pretty much lose our forest and we lose the ecosystem services that we receive from our forests, such as the ones that Eliki alluded to, clean drinking water, uh, fertile land. Um, and since uh, 2009, uh, we've been working with the Department of Forests on communicating about the Fiji forest policy, which is a shift from clear fell logging to integrated resource management with Itoke landowners and we've been trying to understand what are the basic needs of communities, uh, what are the capacity needs that they have or uh, that they need in order to be able to better manage their forests. Um, and we've been doing this uh, since 2010 with the Darwin Initiative at BirdLife International and we've got some really interesting results uh, that is showing that the, at the local level, at the community level, they would like to participate in sustainable forest management in Red Plus. Mm -hmm. um, but in looking at the national forest policy and the concept of permanent forest estates, uh, we actually need to, to help these communities and even the Department of Forest in seeing how they can continue to work together so that landowners can make informed decisions, you know, so that if they're going to log, then they log their forest properly. All right. If um, they're going, yeah. Sorry. Um, we're going to have to take a break now, but when yeah. we come back, we'd, I'd like to talk more about landowner participation in, in preservation and conservation. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly.
Good evening. Welcome back to the show. We're talking about reducing uh, deforestation and forest degradation in Fiji uh, through the Red Plus program. Before the break, uh, Nunia had mentioned uh, how local communities uh, are interested in sustainable logging. Uh, therein comes in the issue of, of uh, people's livelihoods. A lot of these communities rely on uh, timber, on logging, uh, lease monies and royalties and whatnot for their livelihood. Uh, so, how, how do you uh, convince them, uh, Eliki, that they can still lead a good life, but they can still play a part in, in preserving forests? Um, is, that, is that easy to do? Thank you. Thank you, Edwin. This is a challenging question. Um, see, um, Red Plus is about um, sustainable logging. It's also about uh, reducing um, a clear felling. It's also about um, planting trees, carbon enhancement. It's also about conservation. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, activities. There are actually five activities under the Red Plus. So uh, these are important because uh, you can, you, it doesn't really mean that you don't log. You can log, but it has to be done sustainably, in a sustainable manner. And um, <coughs> this is where the benefit flows in. Eh? But then you are, in most cases, the thinking is that the benefit from the forest is very much on the value of timber. The thinking is mm -hmm. like that. But that's not uh, the real uh, value of the forest. It's just one of the value of the forest. It is not the complete value because if you lose that forest, you lose the money and then you lose the biodiversity and you lose the quality of water and you lose every other thing. Eh? And then then becomes a very long uh, hardship eh, to the people. So uh, we'll have to see that you know, Red Plus, when it comes in, it, it is sort of uh, bring in a sustainable uh, management regime. So that's to ensure that there is a balanced approach. There's also a need for holistic approach, partnership, you know, bringing the key uh, stakeholders, timber industry, for example. They are very important in this process. We cannot go without them. They must be we must win them into this. There must, there must be a buy-in to get them into this process. Eh? Is, is there involvement uh, from the timber industry? Is the, the industry holistically concerned and, and committed to sustainable logging? Yes, and this, this is uh, the challenge that we have eh, in front of us. And this is where we need to, to raise the awareness with them, eh, to really see uh, where we can balance. You know, what I was saying is sustainability. It's in line with good... Uh, Governance is also in line with the green uh, growth framework for Fiji. Make sure that we, we use our resource, but in a sustainable manner for the betterment of our people. Right? Well, uh, the long term. If, if you put a forest in front of somebody and if you put a stack of money in front of somebody, obviously they'll be drawn towards, towards the money. Uh, I, I'm talking about uh, the, the timber industry, the, the logging industry. But, but also, we are asking uh, resource owners to forego their resources and therefore they would expect that uh, there would be viable compensation for it. So who pays? What sort of system are we, are we looking at? And how is it going to be administered? Uh, Elisabeth, I'd like to bring you into this discussion. Well, the uh, Red Pass, right now we are running a pilot program at uh, while well the forestry is uh, leading this at the at uh, Rombuta. Uh, for the, the Emalu uh, up in Navosa. Uh, all these things were that you're talking about have been taken on board or consideration. And this is why we're moving slowly but progressively towards, you know, um, uh, as a national uh, a pilot project and also identifying what the challenges are and what should be the, the, the uh, way forward. Um, how to deal with communities because uh, that's you know there's a different dynamic uh, when you go down to the community level and and so right you mentioned that uh, you know you have a stack of money and you have forests what will they go for but probably at the macro level but in the the the, the macro level the macro level you know for normal um, uh, for the Itoke, uh the forest is uh, for them a you're going into the for on any forest is like going into a f pharmacy slash kitchen 
pharmacy because you know there's oh, herbs the and yes that you can take from the forest box and from the, the foliage uh, there's the okay slash uh, kitchen where food preparation you know a grocery store grocery store because you get your banana cut down your banana the ripe banana or um, dig up yams uh, you it's like going into a kitchen where you prepare the meal you know you go in for a campfire uh, dig up some yams you put in the over the fire around uh, with the uh, uh, prawns that you catch stuff in a bamboo together with foliage we call mbelembele in the forest uh, roast this over the fire leave it for some time until it's, it's ready it's to it's eat. very integral to everyday life yes and uh, recreational because there's pools there shaded mm -hmm. places people just you know roll out their sulu and they rest um, for uh, a hardware store where you get your timber and your bamboo or um, even reeds, the, mm. the, the young bamboos that you know they use for pegs. So ve bag. very quickly, uh, yep. if we talk about, uh, let's take Rambuta for example, if we talk about conservation, if, if we bring, bring in these initiatives, does that necessarily mean that the Eat OK have to forego uh, these, these uh, privileges, so to speak, um, uh, within within their communities, uh, uh, who's best uh, suited to answer that question? Um. We, sorry, we're talking about the Red Plus program? Uh, yes. No, uh, as uh, the acting conservative was saying, you know, there is, uh, they manage the forest sustainably. You, you can still use it? They can still use it. But they Just will be, be aware of what yes, you're doing. Uh, is that it? Under the Red Plus program, there would be places that they assign to, they can log from. But there will be specific areas also that you need to keep for uh, sustainability mm. uh, so all those have been thought out and also for alternative uh, livelihood method where they will you know if some programs have come in like beehiving and introducing other um, small scale uh, you know okay. uh, livelihood right and with but that um, we're going to take and if you're going break. to have it all together with red plus yeah. program uh, that uh, looks at the eventual carbon trading as a product, you know, you, you have the quality, it's the quality of life yeah. that you well, have. It. You've basically tied it in uh, to what we're going to talk about, but carbon trading, we're going to talk about uh, after the break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. We'll get right into discussions. Uh, we're talking about uh, forest conservation and preservation. Uh, before the break, uh, Eliki uh, Elisapedi mentioned uh, carbon stocks. Now we talk about it. it, it it's, it's, it's a term that's, that's heard, but what does it really mean? To my understanding, the more trees we plant, the more carbon emissions we cancel out. Uh, is that uh, uh, what it is in a nutshell? And how do we apply it to Fiji? <laughs> Thank you, Edwin. Uh, carbon, I think most of you know, it's just gas. Now when you uh, cut off tree, you are releasing this carbon dioxide. It goes into the atmosphere and then it heats up the environment and it affects the, chain, uh, the weather pattern. Eh? So uh, carbon, the tree is uh, doing this. You know, even we know from, from science that tree is taking in carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen. This is the process that uh, that's why we need to keep uh, the forest standing to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that heat up the environment and heat up the, the, the earth and the change in the, the, the climate. Eh? And this is a basic uh, thinking behind carbon. So how do you go into carbon um, payment? By um, the amount of forest that you can conserve or restore or plant will increase the capacity of retaining. So what they call the, the, ton, the ton of CO2 equivalent is the trademark that we use. Eh? The ton of CO2 equivalent that you can store in Fiji that can be compensated through um, incentive payment from donors or from partners overseas. Eh? And this is the basic idea. So, so um, there are two basic uh, uh, benefits from this and one of them is carbon benefit and the other the other is the non-carbon benefit.
kind of it that Nunia was mentioning. Yeah, the non-carbon is much more relevant for Fiji because we have only limited size. You know, we are competing with countries that have huge forests, which is we have one point something million, one point eight million. There are so many countries that have big plantains. The biggest in the Pacific is PNG, for example. It's huge, huge plantains. So the more the forest you have, the more the opportunity to have a ton of carbon equivalent that can be sold and uh, for, for economic benefit. Basically, uh, larger countries which, uh, which emit carbon, which are carbon polluters uh, as they're under, understood to be, pay other countries to plant more trees. We, yes. We're sorry we're emitting so much carbon, we're polluting yes. the environment. Yes. Please yes. plant trees for us and we'll pay you money. Yes. Uh, it's an offset process, eh? Offsetting. They yes. offset the, the emission that they put out mm -hmm. by paying and has, ah, has Fiji started receiving this payment, or is the, uh, is the process underway through this Red Plus program? Uh, hopefully, we'll do this, we'll receive this payment later. It comes in later, after we do all the hard uh, work. Yeah, at the moment, we have uh, uh, funding from, from the World Bank. It's our readiness phase program. It's putting in place institution, building the structures, uh, uh, getting the people aware, putting the policy in place. Before the, the, the next level is uh, where we can receive payment around 2020. So there's a lot of uh, things to do and a lot of time in our hand eh, to, to work uh, towards that. Uh, mm. We hope uh, to by 2020 to start receiving uh, you know, this, uh, this payment, hopefully, after the, um, after the people from UNFCCC, for example, come in and verify that we have done so much and then we deserve to be paid uh, accordingly. So, I think this is something we'd like to pick up again uh, through, uh, later on in the show. But l let's bring uh, Nature Fiji into the discussion. Um, when, when you spoke earlier, you talk about the need to preserve our, our, our uh, 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 traditional or, 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 or animals and, and, and uh, insects which, which are only found in Fiji. Now, are they un under a real drastic threat right now? Or is it something that will come about if we don't act now uh, on everything that we've been mm. talking about, on getting more communities to conserve their forests and to have uh, protected areas? Okay. Thank you, Edwin. Well, the, one of the biggest threats to our endemic species is habitat loss, the loss of the forest area that they can forage in, that they can fly around in. Um, and uh, one example is the crested iguana, the habitat of the crested iguana, which is the dry forest, we only have 2% of that remaining uh, in the country today. And so therefore, the distribution of the crested iguana is very limited to only these pockets of forest. There are other threats like invasive, like cats and rats, which, uh, which predate on, on iguanas. Um, but um, yes, in order to, to ensure that our native species can survive, we need to make sure that there are pockets of forest that we keep for them, for them to be able to, to move around freely. Uh, if we practice logging, then we need to be sure that at the end of the day, a matangali needs to sit down, look at all their forest, and then with the Department of Forest, identify the accessible areas that they can practice logging on and practice sustainable forest logging there. Identify areas that just cannot be touched because the area is too steep and any machine going there would just get damaged or it's a, an OHS issue. And you call that protection forest. Those areas just cannot be touched and those are some of the areas where these endemic species live. So it's maintaining that area and making sure that they remain protected and, and are never touched. And, and where does the Itoki Affairs Ministry tie into, into this, uh, what, what Nonia is talking about? We have a lot of, see for that we, have, we need a lot of awareness. Uh, many at the community level, they take a lot of things for granted, but how their, their action is impacting on the next community and to the surrounding communities, they have no idea. So Nunia has been in Marngetiviti and likewise some of the other NGOs and uh, uh, who, who, who deal with wildlife and conservation, they've been invited to our respective forums. Um, and uh, one of such I was uh, uh, talking about earlier is the National Itokia Resource Owners Committee, who in, you know, is a network of local uh, 
communities with their links going right down to every village eh, through the YM uh, Yumbula management steering committees uh, that have been set up by the one of our institutions, the Ethiopia Affairs Board, uh, throughout the nation. And for some, they're still developing on developing stages right now. But the message is clear that this needs to be worked on. And uh, we're very much aware from the national level, but this again needs to be, uh, you know, taken down to the to the local level. Most of them are aware. Most of them are not seeing species, you know, th um, that were there several years ago. And uh, but it's the scientific reasoning behind it, you know. And they yet they're still cutting down forests or uh, um, doing damage to the environment. Mm -hmm. It's uh, these that. They need to be uh, th th a lot of awareness and training uh, needs to take place. Okay, mm -hmm. and with that, we've come to the end of yet another segment. Uh, stay with us, we'll be back for more discussions very shortly. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Now, uh, before the break, um, uh, Ilse Pedi, you mentioned how communities themselves are identifying that species are not showing up. Um, uh, traditional villages, the Itoki, have uh, a lot of knowledge about their surroundings. Um, uh, the Itoki person is one with the Vanua. That has always been the case. And, and pardon me if, if I'm being ignorant here, but it seems to me that because of, of this thirst and hunger to progress, to move forward as the country moves forward, as other communities move forward, a lot of these 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 uh, traditional communities have lost touch with the Vanua. I'm, I don't know. It seems to me that way because I'm looking at it as the third person. But is this a fair observation? Uh, because of outside influences, because of the desire to, you know, make a better life, a modern life for future generations, for your child. You want your child to have a more comfortable life than, than you did, and. Maybe we've 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 sort of turned our back on 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 the Vanua. Uh, it, it's an open question to the three of you. <laughs> That's definitely going in taking us another dimension. But yes, we ha we do agree. We recognize that at the Ministry of Ethiopia Affairs, the breaking down of social structures eh? uh, here in the office place is very different. Uh, women might be leading their divisions or, uh, uh, you know, uh, everyone is on the same footing and we operate very professionally. But when we get to the village, there's even no protocol and the structure that we uh, comply with as soon as we get into the uh, uh, to the Vanua level. So, yes, many who, because of this um, broken down uh, structures where people have lost uh, or are ignorant of their identity or um, uh, their have lost their values, their, their ties, their ties too, here, yes. that it would definitely show in the uh, in the in the structure and in the behavior or in the the harmon you know the the harmonized structure of, of uh, uh, the Vanua, or even from the family level. Eh? Mm. Um. Just, just to add to that, um, one of the things that, that we are losing out to onto is traditional ecological knowledge, that's knowledge of the birds, knowledge of the tr traditional medicines. I think in, uh, in the Vanua structure previously, you know, there was a lot of uh, interaction between the grandparents and the grandchildren and that is and all our most of our knowledge and the skills are passed down orally and uh, you know with our education system and children leaving the rural area and going into boarding schools uh, or leaving home and coming into town areas there is that uh, that connection between the grandparents and the, and the grandchildren and and the grandchildren having the opportunity to learn firsthand from their grandparents that is something that that we are we are finding is is actually quite uh, something that we need to be aware of mm -hmm. and it's uh, it could be a contributing factor to the loss of this traditional ecological knowledge it's 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 intellectual knowledge yes. that, that that is being lost and 
uh, as we grow, yeah. as, as our elders move on and, and leave us, yeah. we won't know. That well, knowledge yes, goes with it them. It goes with them. That's yes. right. I mean, I, I know personally of people who would go into the forest and they could identify birds by the call of the bird or, or, or toads or even small insects. Mm. And you can't afford to lose that. So we're not just talking about saving forests and trees and the environment. We're talking about saving a way of life. Is that... Our identity. Our is identity. identity. Yeah. I think uh, it's, uh, it's a very good... Uh, Point Edwin and in the, and when the in the red program, this is one of the um, very uh, important aspect yeah? knowledge management. You know, looking at uh, not only uh, looking at the knowledge they, that they know, but also building on things that they don't know. You now it's important that they know. Eh? So we are one of the, uh, the, the 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 aim now is for us to build capacity at the local level to do biodiversity monitoring. Because this, when you go into monitoring, you see the, the, the dynamic of forest changes, eh? if you know, the impact of the work that we do. So this, these are also the process that we want to go through the, the red bus. So we want to build knowledge. They have to know what is there in their forest, and then they have to identify and record it over time you know, mm -hmm. to monitor. The, the progress, whether mm. we are really progressing. And this is, uh, we, are, we are coming up with a monitoring tool of managing, you know, mm. managing this biodiversity at their own. So we want to use local people to do this. Mm. Uh, and to, to, so we, there's a lot of empowerment, eh? training that is needed yes, here to add value to what they already uh, know. Eh? And mm. so, so basically knowledge is a very important uh, mm. aspect, uh, not only tr traditional and local knowledge, but also scientific knowledge that we will want to build our community. No, we, we should not underestimate the capacity that is there in the village. A lot of them are very, very sharp and very observant. You know? Big hunters they especially. Are, they, are, they are very, very smart good. and yeah. they, they, they know their way through this. So we are, there is a lot of opportunity to develop this mm. uh, and through this uh, red program. And, and how do you propose to, to record this and, and to manage it? Uh, it's, it's a large amount of information very valuable. I'm not talking about having a physical library as such, but but you know who oversees it and how do you how do you manage it and preserve it? Yeah, good question. I mean, this is what we'll we'll capture, you know, because in the red program we have the national forest um, um, forest um, management systems. There will be a system where we capture everything that is happening in the forest, in the Fiji, all of Fiji. So these are some of the areas that will be some of the uh, key points that can be captured and stored in our system. Eh? It's not only for our record, it's for the national mm. information system. So it also be used for international reporting system. We, uh, so this is where, and then link up with other systems that are existing. Example, mm. the one with the herbarium system at the USP and uh, University of the South Pacific, as well as others. So this is where we need to uh, Mm. to keep uh, all this information in. Okay, mm. um, Elizabeth, uh, f for the ministry, uh, Itok Affairs, of course, we, we're talking uh, intrinsically about uh, what Itok Affairs is all about. Knowledge management, coming up with, with a database of all these records and all, all this traditional knowledge. Now, uh, do you expect that we will find out things that we had lost over time or we had forgotten? And, and how, how important is that to the ministry? Yes. Well, definitely, we will be finding out uh, a lot of that. Not only that, but see, we have the at the ministry. We also have the Institute of uh, Ethiopia Institute uh, for Culture and Language, uh, who one of the core uh, uh, delivery or core task is actually to do cultural mapping uh, around uh, for Fiji in all the. 1,171 villages, and which they have been doing, I think they're working on the two last provinces uh, uh, this year. But it's, again, collecting the information and also verification of those uh, information. Most of that is captured under uh, what we're talking about. You know, they started, they've collecting data, they've collected data. Um, when Red Plus came in or climate change came in, some emerging issues had come in. Uh, those were, the, the, the reporting or template uh, was 
changed or was altered so that they could capture also uh, mm. what uh, the, the new issues or what they need to be looking out for under those various uh, uh, topics, eh? including child protection program, which is also a new one. Um, so yes, that is there now. Information, we are custodians also of um, uh, information, uh, different ones in uh, different uh, uh, institutions and departments. It, it, it's all very encouraging, isn't it? Yes. I mean, it, it, it sort of gives you the impression that, that uh, we're bringing history to life. Uh, in a yes. Sense. Mm. Um, that's sorry, I was also going to add. They also have a revival unit, not well funded right now, but something that we hope excuse me, uh, government I think had allocated budget for it for this year. Okay. Uh, we're, 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 going to, we're going to have to take a break now. Okay. Um, we're going to come back and finish off this discussion. When we come back, our last segment for this evening. <laughs> Welcome back to For the Record. Um, we're going to pretty much wrap up for this evening. Uh, but uh, uh, before we go, uh, one final question for, for the panel. Uh, Eliki, uh, uh, as we move forward, as the RED program uh, progresses and, and we see tangible change, uh, what sort of outcomes can we expect uh, as, a, as a country? What, what areas would you say we'll be able to preserve? What, what's the priority? Good uh, uh, question. Yeah. We have, uh, as as um, I, as you know, we have identified critical areas already yeah, in Fiji, and uh, so we have it in the map. So uh, these are some of the targeted areas. Yeah? From for the red uh, component, it's uh, focusing on some of the uh, virgin uh, forest area with high biodiversity uh, um, elements. Uh, this is what we really want to to engage uh, and conserve. Um, but the, the one of the basic challenges that we have, if you want to know, is uh, financing. You know, we are very fortunate that the government supports some of this initiative for a while now, eh? and plus uh, support from other agency, uh, GIZ, for example. And now the support is coming as we profile these uh, th uh, Fiji's progress into the World Bank. We kind of raise the profile of Fiji, and there's a lot of opportunity for financing. Eh? And uh, we hope that this is an area that we will move in quickly. Predictable financing uh, system to support um, some of our work. Not only conservation in nature, but reforestation. You see a lot of degraded landscape we have. We need mm -hmm. to start building this forest back, you know, because it is very important for us. Not only for, for, our, for the system, for the biodiversity, but also for timber production, and this is where Finance needs to roll in eh, to start. We need to roll this into the national uh, program. So uh, uh, involvement of different state stakeholders is very critical here. We need to start working on this mm -hmm. also. Eh? Okay, and, and so uh, uh, if once that happens, once we have these protected areas, uh, Nunia, very quickly, what so do we expect a, a sort of resurgence in some of the species that? that we should have in Fiji. Is that is that the idea for, for Nature Fiji? Yes, um, for, for the priority areas that have been identified by the National Protected Areas Committee, there have been biodiversity assessments done in, in some of these areas. And the important thing that we need to look forward to is monitoring these sites and, and asking the question is, if these protection mechanisms that have been put in place, the financing mechanisms, the livelihood mechanisms, if that is enough to protect the biodiversity or to ensure the, the ability to survive in these areas and also to, to look at management systems. Uh, some of these protected uh, areas are, are areas that where the community might decide to engage ecotourism. If they do engage in ecotourism, what are some of the uh, things that they need to, to keep in mind uh, when they're engaging in ecotourism? So, um, we, we look forward to, uh, to the results of one of the forestry initiatives, which is the, uh, uh, which is the strengthening of protected areas in Fiji. Um, that is one way that we know we can work with uh, communities to better understand how they can look after their forests and better manage it. Mm. Well, I mean, 
I'd like to carry on discussions. There, there is so much more to mm. talk about, but unfortunately, we've we've come to the end of the show for this evening. I'd like to thank the three of you for coming in. Uh, best of luck with your work, and I hope I live to see the day that everything that we're talking about uh, becomes reality. Thank you, Edmund. And that was the show for this evening. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can email us for the record at fpc.com.fj. I'll be back again next Sunday. But before we go up next is uh, Nemarin Dalembatiki with his uh, weekly column. We will see you next weekend. Good evening. <laughs>
The village elders have refused to sign the documents for fear of losing their land. The danger in this is that those villages which refuse to sign the documents will no longer be classified as villages, but settlements. The implications are quite serious. The villages will lose all the advantages and assistance given by the government via the Ministry of Itauke Affairs. I appeal to those villagers sitting on the fence to say yes and sign. There is nothing in this new move that suggests there is a sinister motive. To the politicians, please stop exploiting people's ignorance and tell them the truth. This is Neman in the of the Fiji Sun. And this was my say this week. For more of my views, you can read the Fiji Sun. See you next week.